Frank Soundscaper, I'm not a rocket scientist. You know, if you want to see rocket scientists, rocket mines next year. This is where you have to go. I'm an industrial engineer. Uh, I worked for Apple. I was here in this building 11 years ago when I had a stock accreditation for my own company. By 2003, the market uh, changed slightly, so we never used it. And uh, I ended up uh, then uh, a year later in ASA because I thought working with astronauts is pretty cool. Uh, later realized uh, that I ended up in a very difficult organization. Anyhow, um, we do everything besides space, at least my office. The rest of our team in ESA is really doing rocket science. And what rocket science means, if you're looking to the Ariane rocket you see here, burning 17 tons of fuel per second, uh, accelerated uh, speeding in four minutes to 28,000 kilometers, every Porsche is bad against that, and the payload is 3%. So you have to be a DATCOM engineer, otherwise it's not working. Anyhow, we don't speak about that. We speak about what we learn out of it, what we can do. We always work on the edge, what is possible. And um, I had the pleasure to, to, to meet a, a, a guy in an in innovation forum in um, Moscow last November, um, Harald um, Serverdot. He's president of Rasmussen. Rasmussen makes this business in materials, especially precious materials, so platinum, gold, and these things, is one of the fast moving, biggest uh, moving companies in Europe uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. And he speaks about limited of resources. And there he says, well, we have to take care, there's everything. And then I said, Harald, we're in the same business. I said, why? You, know, you make with really with expensive material and you're recycling it. I recycle precious ideas. First he was struggling, then he understood. Because we have a lot of stuff outside. If you're looking to the recycle uh, uh, waste, what we have, steel, we are 72%, that's great. Plastic, we 30%. But how many ideas, in, in invention and in ideas we recycle? Only a few. And this will be strikes us in future. One company recycles a LiDAR technology, builds into the nozzle uh, of, um, of the windmills, and measuring the wind which comes in front of me. That means they looking into the future. So when you have storm, you normally shut down. If you have a peak, you harvest. One of our 200 incubation companies we have supported. We support 60 companies per year, 80 next year. We are growing, and we are the nice uncle. With 50,000 bucks in the pocket, this is what they get. We don't take shares. We have the right work, and we give the right thing. So this is more or less the business, what we're in it, helping companies to grow uh, and using our technologies. Uh, as I said, I work for Steve, and there's two, there's a different thing between innovation and invention. If you invent something, it takes time. You have to protect it, and it's not true like the fax machine that, that you make money out of it. If you invent something, it's not true you make money. If you do innovation, and you take the iPod, and uh, the first time, everything was existing, hard drive, MP3 player was existing, the market was existing, but nobody was making money out of it. The software iTunes Apple purchased, what Apple did was excellent system integration and perfect marketing around. The same with the IMAX, just adding color. The female consumers loved it. Hey, it looks great. It's not about RAMs and megabytes. This was really the business behind. And uh, this is what we do. I had, in the last 12 months, several striking moments. I have two boys, twins. And I was cleaning up my home office, and he was coming to my cellar, and, said, and I had this old telephone. By the way, Steve Jobs was copying that from the Deutsche Post, because this telephone you got in three colors. Eh? Gray, orange, and green, I remember. So my son, five times, November, said, Dad, what is that? I said, it's a telephone. And he said, where's the display? <laughs> I said, yeah, no, you don't need a display. You take your finger, and you move, you find around. Why? <laughs> and there it struck me. We living in the past, my kids living already in the future. So we produce old stuff. Nokia realized that, eh? They don't have mobile phones anymore. And I'll come to that in a second. So uh, my other son, Lucas, this was in winter, red, red slopes, eh? Five years. Little fear and no respect. Yeah? Dad, I can. I don't need to break. There is uh, one of the best TED Talks I ever saw is uh, Sir Ken Robinson how school kills creativity. So we bring the kids into school, and then we kill creativity in university, they have to learn it back. And if you look, Steve Jobs was 21 when he was becoming and uh, founding Apple. Uh, Werner von Braun was 25. When uh, Einstein had his moment of genius, he was 26. So it's really about thinking why and changing the spirit. 
Good example was my old boss. This year, I bumped the first time, or maybe last time, into a void snake. And uh, uh, I never met him because when I was in Apple, it was long ago. And you know why he invented the, the, the floppy drive we're still using? Because Steve said to him, Wojcik, if you want to go to Las Vegas computer show, or uh, consumer electronics show, I need a drive. And he said, shit, I have to read a manual. And then he changed the business of floppy drives. And he moved the processors down from 40, which normally was the controlling of the drive, to nine. He moved it down by 30, uh, a third of the price of the normal drives because he wants to go to the show and he had no clue about floppy drives. He was just reading the manual, taking something out because he was not a specialist. And this is what we have to keep. We have to keep to ask the right questions. So what is the world looking like of Johannes in 20 years? Uh, there's Mr. Nordstrom, a, a professor in, in, St in Stockholm, and he created the, the, the word of the setter flat. You know, who knows who is a setter byte? Okay, it's 10 high 24. It's a big, big number. The traffic of the internet this year will be 1.8 kilo setter, uh, yotta byte. So we have a mass of data. Everybody knows Moore's law, you know, transistors, double and so on, but nobody knows Greg's law. Greg's law says that the size of the database doubles every eight to nine months. So we're running into a problem. So we have a massive birth of data. And then there's another effect called the Flynn effect. It says our kids are more clever than we are. I'm still I'm not sure if that's true, at least with my kids, the year is different. But it will be. Yeah? It's, it's really proven. The problem is that the data we have moves in a different direction. And to manage this will be an issue. So what will be 2020 for the kids? The map and the time is the key. Navigation and GPS and Galileo does only means time difference, measuring time difference. And what you need is a map to control it. And this will be the Internet 3.0. This is when, when you make a new startup company, this is a hot subject. This is a big, big subject, and I'll tell you why. Germany has started to categorize and to store statistic data in a raster 100 by 100 age, population, richness, what they do, religions. The map becomes four-dimensional. First we go three-dimensional, so it's not only the map, where you are, it's not only the temperature, it's also really statistic data. So the, the future will be superimposing this information. Facebook is nothing against this, it's kindergarten. Every building in Germany will get a unique number. Every building. Wow, Germany starts, the rest will follow. Connected drive, scary stuff, trust me. Eh? The car becomes a sensor already. If you have BMW, they, all what you do, it's already transmitted to, to BMW on a big server, and we have uh, Garmin behind, and we have Nokia behind reading the map. In future, it will be environmental data. Where they are, what is the temperature, surface information. The car becomes the sensor, and then connect the drive and the car to car communication. Wow. Nokia. <laughs> Uh, Priel and uh, is a colleague of mine, we, we tr tried to invite, no, we invited even Mr. Halper, uh, which is the board member of Nokia responsible for maps this year to our Congress in, in April. And we said, Mr. Halper, in 10 years, Nokia will not sell mobile phones anymore. We were wrong. Nine and a half years. Wrong. Time is quick. And this was, when I was a student, this was the must have. Yeah, this was the best thing, you know. Yeah, and this was the first mobile phone, which was pretty cool. They will change. And the only solution why they will change is that they have a pretty good map. It's the NAFTEC map. It's the best map we have in the world. And this is the reason I believe they will take over FedEx in six years. Because FedEx goes to every point in the world and gets positioning data. Already now they know, Nokia, if there's a roundabout. Within two days they send the team to it. So it's about the power of information. What else will happen? Let's see. Quick and slow. It's about data. Now we're processing images from Earth's observation, a satellite image within 11 minutes, from making this, the picture to really have it on your computer. Three years, four years ago, it took weeks, because first the government said, no, this is the airport, this you shouldn't see, this, should, this was not, it becomes real time. And the data will be like news. Old news is bad news, it's like vegetable. You will get really data in milliseconds, environmental data. Ozone, humidity, does not matter. And then you have the time component. You go to the history, and then you go to the future. Google Maps. 
Google Maps by 2020 will have invested 20 billion bucks into Maps. We were in discussion with Waze. You know, who knows Waze? Small startup company, uh, 40 people, just purchased by Google, 1.1 billion. Six years old, five years old. Just Map company. I believe Teleatlas will disappear, Nokia will remain, and there will be the big fight in 2020, who will remain who has the monopoly of maps. And the map is the key. Google Glasses, nice to have. My kids will uh, hate it because they're not allowed in school. Yeah, you can't cheat. And it's just a gimmick. You will buy it from uh, HTT. Who heard about Skybox? Pretty cool company in Silicon Valley. They want to have satellites, live video from space, so that you see what's going on in your garden. They're just building the, the satellites. This is now. They will be standard, and there will be competition 2020. So what is it about? It's about who managed the matrix. Who? It's about not App Store. It's not about application. It's about the logic. What I can read out of these many layers of data and what I can get out of it. And who managed these matri the matrix will have the key to a lot of new business and a lot of new um, ventures. So what are the dish, the ingredients for your dish? You need several things. First, the storage is easy. IBM just invested 100 million in storage for uh, IT infrastructure for Earth observation. ESA just announced to, to give out uh, 12 billion images of satellites. One image is 150 gigabyte. And we have not one image. It's between 35 and 500 channels. So 500 different data per image. This is the big business there is already there. Maps is already existing. What it will be the main ingredient for the future is the logic. The logic to make out of five different data one new product. And this will be in the cloud and this will be on your server because you own it. You get different data, you make something out of it. Nowadays it's already easy to say. You go swimming, what is the water quality, what is the water visibility, what is the water temperature and the ozone level and maybe what kind of sun cream you have there. That's standard but you make something new out of it, and this will come in future, and this will change the world. Who will be the new big brother? Who will be the next Apple? Who knows where this building is? What is it? Münchner Rück. They're working on that. This is where they may really manage already the data source, and they're pumping already a lot of money in because they want to be sure what's happening in the future. Therefore, looking again with the eyes of my kids, they will see it different, eh? They see easy applications. And I think this is the reminder every day when I go to a home and speak with them. We're living in the past. We really have to see it with the eyes of the kids and ask why. Why we need that, why we do that, and can we do it better? And I change with the image from Mars Express on the way to Mars because this is where we're in, in the business. Normally we know the pictures from either we see the moon, the standard, or the Apollo program where we look down and you see the Earth. But on the way to Mars, Mars Express was moving slightly. On the right you see the moon, on the left you see the Earth. And from time to time, the business is just there, but we don't see it. And this is what we have to change. We have to change the view, ask why, and find the right solution. And this is the business you need to bring your business off the ground, or this is our job in ASA, at least in my small offices. Uh, and thank you very much for your attention.